Okay. Uh, good morning. Today we'll discuss about interthread communication. Uh, we'll go to the next concept in threads, which is interthread communication. Okay. So interthread communication. So from the title itself, you can know that here threads are going to communicate. That is, is nothing but it is related with communication of threads. Uh, two or more uh, two threads want to communicate. They want to communicate. How this communication is done? Okay. So that is what about uh, interthread communication. So in order to communicate, uh, they use three different methods. One is wait. Another one is notify. Notify all. So whenever two threads want to communicate, they have to use these three methods: wait, notify, notify all. Okay. So now. The thing is, okay. So now the thing is, see how uh, why they need to communicate. Uh, what is the mechanism? We'll discuss the common problem that is discussed with interthread communication. Is we have two things called. There is a problem called producer consumer problem. There is a problem called producer consumer problem. so what is producer consumer problem is producer is one who produces the data produces the data consumer is one who is going to consume the data is that right so they have one memory location suppose the variable is same suppose we put some variable or see something like this this is called a buffer here is going to produce the data and is going to store the data here the consumer also will try to get the data from the here and he is going to consume the data he has to produce and he has to consume so this this is called producer consumer problem so this problem is normally solved by using interthread communication here producer is one thread consumer is one thread so now these two threads need to communicate because see producer did not produce any data can consumer consume the data it's not possible until producer produces the data consumer cannot consume anything so that's why there is there is a need to communicate between producer and consumer similarly in the reverse way we have a fixed size fixed size so size suppose 10 so 10 elements are produced by the consumer after 10 producer cannot uh, store the elements there until consumer is going to consume at least one data in such a case also such a case also what is going to happen these two need to communicate the producer and consumer need to communicate so that is why we are going to use interthread communication in this so now what is the main process we are not going to in detail discuss about this code and all it takes lot of time just in order to understand what is the purpose of interthread communication we have gone to this problem so now producer produces the data and stores here and then only consumer has to consume okay so now they use these two are represented as two threads and they use wait notify notify all methods to communicate so what is the purpose of this methods is first one is wait is is a method so which is called by a thread which needs an updated data okay a thread which needs an updated data need to call the wait method what is that a thread which wants the updated data it has to call the wait method and it will go into waiting state why because the data is not updated the producer has not produced the data then what consumer has to do consumer will call the wait method and he will go to waiting state producer this data is not updated data is not updated so what producer producer did not update the data what consumer will do is he will call the wait method and he'll go into waiting state waiting state he'll be waiting so that is the purpose of wait method wait method is used by the thread which wants the updated data so whenever it calls the wait method it goes into the waiting state until it gets an updated data once updated data is getting it will come out of the waiting state and get how to come out this that is done by using notify method okay so the other thread whichever is doing whenever it updates a data whenever it updates the data it it calls the notify method okay notify you know it is like alert message uh, the thread suppose consumer is called the waiting method and he is in waiting state so producer will produce one data and he will call the notify method so whenever he calls the notify method the thread which is in waiting state will get the notification message and it will come out of the waiting state because data is there updated data is there so consumer can consume the data so that is the purpose of notify method 
What is that? So wait is a method which is called by a thread which wants an updated information, which means there is no updated information. It is waiting for an updated information. Then the thread will call the wait method and go to waiting state. So now the other thread which is which has to update the data, if it is if it has successfully updated the data, it calls the notify method so that the thread which is in the waiting state will come out of the waiting state and it is going to get the data. So that is the purpose of wait and notify method. So what is notify all is what is notify all is it is a one which is going to call which is going to notify all the waiting threads. So this is how this this notify will work is how it works is if I call t1 dot wait then if I call uh, t1 dot notify okay so only this thread gets notified only this thread gets notified notify all means all the threads which are in the waiting state will get notified all the threads which are in the waiting states will get notified that is called notify all okay so this is inter thread communication one important aspect that you have to remember is these meth methods are actually not there in the thread class, but they are in the object class. So uh, I already discussed object is the supermost class in Java. If anything is there in the object, you can use anywhere. You can use anywhere. So why these methods are not defined in the thread class, but they have been defined in the defined in the object class is because see, suppose producer is a new class that I am creating. So P1 dot wait. Okay, P1 dot wait. So P1 may not be thread, suppose, for example, otherwise I'll take student. I created it a student object, student object. S1 is a student object. It is not a thread object. So then if, if this methods are defined in the thread class, they work only for thread class, but they don't work for any type of objects. In order to make them to work for any type of objects, these methods are defined defined in the object class, which is the supermost class. If I define anything in the object class, it can be used with any anything. It can be a student, it can be a customer, it can be an employee. With any object, you can use this wait, notify, notify all methods. If they are not thread also, you can use it. They, if they want to communicate, two objects want to communicate, then also you can use it. But the thing is, because they are defined in the object class, they are not defined in the thread class. That right so this is the this is about uh, inter-thread communication this is about inter-thread communication